How you doing? I hope you had an awesome end of the day. Sorry, I couldn't be there with you. Um, this boy, <laughs> you say hi? This boy has pink eye and an ear infection. So I am not going to be at school tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, but I am going to do our video for tomorrow's lesson. Uh, right now and then tomorrow I'll post uh, another video so as far as lessons go I'll definitely still post the videos but you guys uh, will have a sub on tomorrow which is Wednesday um, and I'm sorry to do that to you but Georgie Georgie needs mama here so here uh, we're going to get into our lesson and we're just going to continue modeling I hope that it's becoming a little bit easier for you guys now that we're working on our third lesson with the modeling a fraction of a fraction just remember <laughs> just remember to stay consistent Bubby to draw your columns first oh, sweetie and then your rows um, and it's going to be oh, thanks, honey. and it's going to be great and if you're if you're still feeling really unsure about this modeling then I think it would be really wise to go back and watch um, some review videos for lesson 13 or 14. But I know you can do it. We're going to keep practicing, and it'll be great. Here we go. Hey, kiddos. So let's get into uh, lesson 15 here. We are going to be doing some modeling, and then really what we're going to be leaning into this lesson is um, the standard algorithm. Um, but before we get there, let's just do a little bit more modeling. So here uh, in B, we're looking for three-fourths of four-fifths. So we are going to show what that looks like in a rectangle rectangular fraction model that is and please remember that we do columns for our second number and then we do rows for our first number so four fits we are going to draw in columns I need to go ahead and separate this rectangle into one two three four five equal pieces because the denominator is five and then I'm going to shade four because we're looking to shade four fifths. So I'm shading in four fifths. Our second number is in columns. So there we have our four fifths. And now three fourths, we're going to put three fourths or fourths on top of our four fifths, but in rows. So I'm going to make four, hopefully pretty even rows. So now we started with fifths. Now I've put rows on <clears throat> top of four fifths. We have four equal rows. And I'm interested in three fourths of my four fifths. Do you see how we have one, two, three, four rows? We have one, two, three, four fourths. I'm not interested in four fourths. I'm just interested in three fourths one, two, three fourths. But I'm not interested in three fourths of my whole. I'm interested in three fourths of four fifths. So I'm going to shade where my four fifths intersects with my three fourths. So I'm looking for three fourths of four fifths. So I'm going to shade that and then I'm going to circle it. So do you guys see how <clears throat> this is three-fourths of four-fifths? So we have one, two, three-fourths of four-fifths. Now we need to figure out hmm, how many squares live inside of three-fourths of four-fifths. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so 3 fourths of 4 fifths is equal to 12. It's my numerator. And then this rectangle is now divided into how many boxes? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 across. And it is 1, 2, 3, 4 tall. So 5 times 4 is 20. So 3 fourths of 4 fifths is 12 twentieths. We're going to really start focusing on simplifying here. So 12 twentieths can be um, simplified into an equivalent fraction. The numbers are a bit smaller. So I'm looking at 12 and I'm looking at 20 and I'm thinking, wow, they both share a common factor of four. 
So I'm going to divide 12 by 4, and I'm going to divide 20 by 4. We're going to te te uh, treat the numerator and the denominator exactly the same. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So our final answer here is 3 fifths. Um, cool, let's look at C. Here we're looking at two-fifths of two-thirds. So we're going to do columns for two-thirds and we're going to do rows for two-fifths. So let's go ahead and make that, draw that rectangle, a rectangular area model, and then we're going to show two-thirds. So I need to draw three equal columns and then we're going to shade in two. So we'll have two thirds. So here we have two thirds. I'm looking for two fifths of two thirds. So we're now going to add rows. We're going to add five rows, equal rows, hopefully, on top of our two thirds. So I have one, two, three, four, five rows, or five fifths. We're interested in two-fifths of two-thirds. We're not interested in two-fifths of one whole. We're interested in two-fifths of two-thirds. We're interested in two-fifths of the shaded area. So that means one, two rows of the shaded area is what we're looking at. So here's our first row. Here's our first fifth, but I need two-fifths. So that's two-fifths of three-fifths in yellow the, I'm sorry, two-fifths of two-thirds. The two-thirds was shaded in red, and then I went across and I shaded two-fifths in yellow. So what we've isolated now is one, two, three, four boxes. So these four boxes um, show us two-fifths of two-thirds. So our answer here is four, over, okay, so we have three across and we have five high. Three times five is 15. Four fifteenths is two fifths of two thirds. And this cannot be simplified. That is the, the simplest version. Okay, so that's, that's our modeling. I, I'm hoping that that's starting to really make a lot of sense to you guys at this point. We are going to solve these problems in two different ways. First, we're going to multiply and then simplify, and then we're going to simplify and then multiply. These are two strategies that you can use when multiplying uh, fractions together, and they're both great, and it's really important that you feel comfortable with both methods. So let's look at this first, 2 thirds times 6 sevenths. So upstairs we have 2 times 6, thank you Elsa, and then downstairs we have 3 times 7. So with this per first method, we're just going to multiply through and then simplify. So 2 times 6 is 12, and then 3 times 7 is 21. Um, I'm looking at 12 and 21 and I'm thinking, hmm, do they share a factor in common? Yes, they do share a factor in common. We can divide 12 by 3 and we can also divide 21 by 3. When we divide 12 by 3, we get 4. When we divide 21 by 3, we get 7. So this is our simplified version. So now we're going to do this problem again, but this time we're going to simplify and then multiply. So same upstairs, same numerators, 2 times 6 and then 3 times 7. The difference with this method is now that we're, we're going to analyze these numbers and we're going to think, hmm, do these denominators have any factors in common with the numerators? The answer is yes. 6 and 3 share a factor in common. We can divide 3 by 3 and get 1. We can divide 6 by 3 and get 2. So here we simplified and now we're going to multiply. The numbers are much smaller so it's probably going to go a little bit more quickly. So 2 times 2, we know that is 4, and then 1 times 7 is 7. Beautiful, so we have the same answer. Life is good. Two different methods, let's try that again. We're gonna uh, solve D uh, in two different ways. We're gonna multiply and then simplify, and then for a second uh, turn, we're going to simplify and then multiply. So four times three, um, up top here for D, and then nine times 10 at the bottom. So here we're not doing, we're just gonna multiply through. So four times three, you guys know, is 12. Is 12 and then 9 times 10 is 90. 
Okay, so we need to get this into smaller terms. 12 and 90. I know that I can divide them both by 2 and get them a little bit smaller. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 90 divided by 2 is 45. Okay, and then we can still get this a little bit smaller. I'm looking, thinking about 6 and 45. I'm realizing that 6 and 45 have another factor in common. It is 3, so we're going to divide 6 by 3, and we're going to divide 40, 45 by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then 45 divided by 3 is 15. So this is our simplified answer. Um, let's do it again. Um, so that's multiplying and then simplifying. Now we're going to simplify and then multiply. We're doing the same problem. So thank you, Louie. We're looking at 4 times 3 up top. And then Evan's telling me we're looking at 9 times 10 on the bottom. And then Natalie's analyzing these numbers and she's realizing, wow, 3 and 9 share a factor in common. 3 can be divided by 3 and we get 1. 9 can be divided by 3 and we get 3. So now we just multiply. So we simplified first and now we multiply. 4 times 1 is 4. And then 3 times uh, 10 is 30. We can simplify this because I know that 4 and 30 have a factor in common. I can divide 4 by 2. And we can also divide 30 by 2. When we divide 4 by 2, we get 2. When we divide 30 by 2, we get 15. Cool. So same answer both times. Okay, guys. So in lesson 15, you're going to be doing two different versions. You're going to do your multiply and simplify. And then you're going to do your simplify and multiply. You're going to do a little bit more modeling uh, just to really cement what it means to find a fraction of a fraction. Um, but really what we're doing here as we move forward, you guys, is, is working on the traditional algorithm and also working on the simplification bit. So um, I'll miss you guys tomorrow. Uh, be your wonderful great selves and um, make it a great day.